In this section, we're going to talk about real-time communication using SignalR. In our first video in this section, we're going to talk about working with SignalR. So we'll find out what SignalR is and a little bit about how it works. So our first question, what is SignalR? Basically, SignalR allows clients to talk to servers and it allows servers to talk to clients in real time. So we don't have to wait a long period of time for message to get created, connection to get created, and wait for the server to respond. They can respond to each other in real time. So it simplifies adding that real time web functionality. It also handles connection management automatically because before SignalR, it was actually quite interesting to get things set up to work together, but SignalR makes this really quite simple to work with. SignalR sends messages to all connected clients simultaneously. That's great if we're using something like, say we wanna send an announcement to everybody that's attached to our website that the web server is going to be going down for a few minutes. We can use SignalR to send out that message to everybody connected to the website all at once. Or suppose we're coming up with chat functionality and we just want one user to talk to another user. We can send a targeted message from one user through the server to another user and they can chat back and forth privately. Or we could send it to a group of clients and we could have a broadcasted chat, something like a webinar going on and SignalR would make that a fairly simple matter to set up. So how does it work? SignalR uses what's called a transport to facilitate this communication, to send messages back and forth between the client and server. The first transport it uses is called a WebSocket. And these are actually relatively new, generally speaking. They've been around for a few years, but they're the newest. And they set up a persistent connection between the client and the server over TCP. So you don't need a new connection every time you want to try and send something. There's a persistent connection there, and the client just sends messages over it, server responds to those messages in real time. If WebSockets aren't available because maybe you're using an older browser or a browser just doesn't support WebSockets yet, SignalR can use two other types of transports. One is a server sent event. So the server actually pushes messages to the client, to the web page on the client, and that would facilitate near real time communication. That's not truly real time but it's really close, so you wouldn't even really notice the difference. The third transport it can use is called long polling. Long polling is a little bit drawn out method to use. It starts out with the client requesting some kind of information from the server. So the client sends that request off to the server. The server doesn't have that information yet, so the server keeps that connection open until the new information is available. Once the server has that information, it sends it back to the client. The client gets this new information package and immediately opens a new request on receipt of that information. And it requests more information. Maybe it's just requesting a heartbeat. But no matter what it's requesting, the server will then keep that connection open until it has whatever information is available and the cycle continues. The client will send the request to the server, server keeps the connection open, sends data to the client, client immediately opens a new request. That's long polling. So you can really see the advantage of using WebSockets with the newer browsers. Much faster, much easier to work with. All of these transports will connect through something on the server called a hub. So the clients connect to the server on a hub. The server is actually hosting the hub. And the hub really opens a high-level pipeline. It allows the clients and the servers to call methods on each other. And we're going to see that when we go into adding the SignalR capabilities into our website. One of the first things we'll do is create a hub and we'll set up the front end to connect to that hub. So that's really all there is to SignalR. I mean, we could go a lot more in depth on how everything works, but from a high level, that's how SignalR works. 